Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Precious Metal Summit Europe. And now with us here is Metallic Minerals. And Greg Johnson, the CEO, wants to give us yeah an update on the company, of course. Greg, hi, how are you? Hey, I'm good. Good to be back with you. Absolutely. That's fantastic. We know each other since the good old times of Nova Gold. Jesus Christ, this is such a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the loud metal cycle. Yeah, exactly. And now we are entering or we have entered the new metal cycle and uh, you ha you are with a different company, of course, Metallic Minerals. So how has the year treated you so far aside of COVID? What were the important uh, things you have achieved this year? Yeah, it's been an exciting time for our group. Um, Metallic Minerals is the silver and gold focused company within the metallic group of companies. So we've mm -hmm. got Uh, ourselves, silver and gold focused, of course. We've got Group 10 Metals, who's battery metals and platinum group. And then our newest company in the group, Granite Creek Copper, which is copper and gold focused. We're all only in North America. Uh, and we've been making great strides uh, on our business model, which is a strategy of acquiring assets in existing producing districts where we see potential for world-class discoveries in each of our prospective metals. So for metallic minerals, Specifically, that's in the Kino Hill Silver District, mm -hmm. as well as the La Plata Mining District in, in the southwestern U.S. Mm -hmm. and these are both districts that have a, a tremendous history of high-grade historic production. And more recently, particularly at Kino Hill, uh, significant discoveries over the last six or eight years demonstrating that these aren't just old districts where they found high-grade silver, but these are districts where new discoveries are being made and new values being created. Fantastic. Okay, then let's get started with the Kino Silver Project. What was the highlight this year? Um, I think it, uh, the drills have turned also so far. And uh, yeah, it, it is a little bit aligned to me also with Alexco, right? That's right. So our next door neighbor is Alexco Resources. Mm -hmm. They got their final permit to go into production on their two new discoveries at, at Birmingham and Flame and Law. Birmingham is probably the best undeveloped silver mine in the world. Um, so with them going back into production, that's the third mine in the last 12 months to go into production in the Yukon. Fantastic for uh, all of us up there. Great for the local community. Um, this is our third year uh, as a company in terms of expiration season. It's our most drill intensive year. So we've got two drills turning. We've got a core drill that's been focused on the advanced stage targets that are right on trend with those known productive mines, kind of head frame expiration, if you will. Uh, and then secondly, our work over the last two years has looked at the less explored parts of this Kino Hill district where we have the same geologic setting. Uh, and that work has identified 12 separate targets that are multi-kilometer in scale that are enriched in silver and, and other metals. And this year, what's exciting is the second drill is testing some of those targets for the first time. And okay. we see the potential for new styles of deposits that haven't been recognized in the Kikino. Super. Have you received already any results from the We drill? just started drilling in August. Ah, okay. Um, so things got a bit of a slow start this year with COVID, uh, restrictions on how big your camps could be and things, but Yukon has done a terrific job of managing that, uh, for very fortunately. And so we were able to, to get our program kicked yeah. off and, And uh, we're expecting results to be coming in here any week, and we'll probably continue to go all the way into early uh, 2021. Okay, super. That's perfect. Before we talk about the La Plata Silver Gold Copper Project, I found also a, a phrase about alluvial production royalty portfolio. Please elaborate on that. What's going on there? Yeah, so we had an opportunity, much like the early days in Nova Gold, where we had a sand and gravel business in Nome, Alaska, uh, that brought in uh, production and cash flow. Um, we had an opportunity to pick up a large block of unmined ground in this famous Klondike Gold District in the Yukon. Uh, and, and this was, of course, the historic Klondike area that everyone knows about, 20 million ounces of production, and today produces half of the Yukon's gold is produced out of that region. So the idea is to invite established, experienced Yukon operators to come in and license ground from us that they get started with production. Uh, and that will produce uh, an advance royalty to us when they get started and then a 10 to 15 percent royalty from uh, their production. Okay. We've already got four licenses in place. We've got, uh, you know, another we've got room for another 10 or 15 operators on our ground. So this is something we're going to be building up over the next couple of years that allows us to fast track to gold production and cash flow, which is a great 
uh, sustainable uh, option to have non-dilutive cash flow for a junior mm -hmm. explorer or developer like ourselves. This is always the best because it moves a lot of risk away. And uh, about what amounts we are talking here per annum, like let's say the one or two million, or is it even higher? What do you think? I know it's hypothetical for the regulators. That's a forward-looking statement. But uh, just to, to, to give our viewers an idea, what, what, what do you think you can achieve? Yeah, I, I think, you know, much like that, um, Sand and gravel operation that I talked to about with Nova Gold, you know, we're looking at something that can quickly build up to maybe a million dollars a year mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the value and, and beyond that. So uh, first step is, hey, let's see if we can cover our GNA, the cost to run mm -hmm. ourselves as a company. Super. Secondly, let's see if we can start to cover some of our exploration costs and give us that sustainability by having this business. And this is production. It's gold. It's going to we're going to take 10 to 15 percent of the actual gold produced. You might even be able to do something creative like dividend that to, to shareholders. So that's a pretty exciting <laughs> opportunity to have something like that in the portfolio. It's yeah. not the main focus, but it's a really nice thing to have in the portfolio. And who knows, with, with the direction that gold and silver are going, you know, that, you know, modest amount of gold production might be very significant for shareholders mm -hmm. in the future. Absolutely. No, that really sounds like a good game plan to me. And um, let's talk about, uh, I think you also had a bulk sampling 2020. What were the results there? Yeah, so we, a um, couple of things. So drill focus in the areas of the advanced stage targets on Kino. We also uh, released some spectacular underground sampling from the formal advanced target at, on the western end of the Kino district. It grades up to 7,500 grams per ton silver, which are you don't hear about grades like that every day. Uh, so, so pretty exciting. Um, as well, uh, down at La Plata, which is our project in the, in the Southwest, um, that was explored, well, mined in the 1800s to the 1940s by you know, 90 different prospects and mines in that area historically. And then in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, Rio Tinto and Phelps Dodge were exploring. And they put an underground at it in that, but we've been able to, to take a sample across that takes us right through the heart of the known deposit. And so we'll be doing uh, significant test work on, on that sample uh, that will be able to really uh, allow us to have modern work that confirms the work that was done historically by those large players. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Wow. Great. Okay. Then let's talk uh, for the end here about the Plata Silver Gold Copper Project in Colorado. So what's next there? What's going on? What's exciting about that project is it was – had this history of high-grade production, much like Keno Hill, but it kind of got forgotten. They shut down mining during World War II. Uh, the small miners never came back. The big guys came in recognizing there was a precious metal-rich porphyry in the center of this district. And it's the high-grade veins that surround that, that porphyry system. Mm -hmm. So we come in uh, after the project has sat idle for 50 years. It was sold at the bottom of the copper market cycle uh, to, to the two individuals we licensed it from, um, and they've basically sat on it, recognizing the long-term potential value. They take shares in metallic minerals, so they're, they're looking for us to create that value. And now we can employ some of the same tools and technologies that have been so successful at Keno Hill in this district uh, down in, in Colorado. It's on the road. It's got power. Uh, we see the potential for bulk tonnage in the porphyry-related system that has a high precious metals component, as well as the potential for spectacular high grade in these structurally controlled deposits that surround the port system, very similar to what our team is focused on at Keenan Hill. Wow, that's super. So what's uh, money in the bank? Are you able to do 2020, 2021? Yeah, we're well-funded right now, about a $75 million market cap today. Mm -hmm. We've got about $10 million in the bank. Of course, we are spending money on exploration right now, so that's going to go down a bit. But we're going to be in great shape for 2021. Uh, we've got $12 million in the money warrants and options that are just naturally coming in. So that's another... A source of funding. And uh, we had a financing that was led by Canaccord Genuity in August. And so having the folks at Canaccord who cover Alexco Resources, our next door neighbor uh, at uh, Keno Hill, and getting behind and introducing us to a much broader audience has been really significant. And I think the big, big thing that's really gotten us on the radar screen as well is the investment last fall by Eric Sprott. And then he topped up again this fall, becoming our largest individual investor and of course he's a pound the table bull for for silver um so i think with the recognition that that eric sprott's investment with can accord and with these large scale targets that we're going to be testing at Kino east on the eastern half of the district that have the potential to be bulk tonnage 
silver deposits, so much larger scale than anything's been seen before, mm -hmm. as well as these large scale targets down at La Plata, puts us in a beautiful position to be a silver focused explorer in low risk political jurisdictions with high growth projects that I think uh, are in high demand and there's very few other uh, deposits like them in the silver space. Super, perfect. That was a great final sentence. Greg, thank you very much. That looks all very promising. You are on the right metals, of course, gold, silver, and copper. That is for sure. And uh, yeah, keep it going, I would say. Let's hit the drills and hit it hard. And because this world needs a lot of gold, silver, and copper. It sure does. <laughs> well, thanks a lot. It's great to be back with you and look forward to uh, updating people in the future on another one of these. Fantastic. We do that. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Take care. Thank you. You too. Thank you very much. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that was Greg Johnson, the CEO of Metallic Minerals. And you heard it. The company is in a fantastic shape in the right metals. $10 million in the bank. A lot of more millions are sitting on the side in warrants, which are in the money. Eric Sport, the largest shareholder, and the drills are turning. So what else do you want? A lot of results are coming. Check out the company. Thanks for watching us. Bye-bye from Switzerland. <laughs>